headlines. Nigeria's Labour Congress declares two-day warning strike over effects of subsidy removal. FRC boss mourns loss of personnel, directs immediate action on cause of death. President Tinubu seeks United Nations support in fight against terrorism. Also in the news, tourists from Morocco shot dead after straying into Algerian waters. Hello there. Welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Abdullahi Ahmed. We start the update in Abuja as the National Nigeria Labour Congress has declared a two-day warning strike beginning on Tuesday, September 5th, in protest against the federal government for failing to address the challenges caused by the removal of fuel subsidy. Now, the NLC President Joa Jero made the declaration on Friday during a press conference at the Labour House in Abuja while speaking on the resolutions of the National Executive Committee of the NLC. The organized labor is accusing the federal government of abandoning the negotiations and failing to implement some of the resolutions from previous meetings. To commence a two-day nationwide warning strike on Tuesday and Wednesday, 5th and 6th of September 2023, to demonstrate our readiness for the indefinite strike later in the month, and to also demand that the state vacates the illegally occupied national headquarters of the National Union of Road Transport Workers to embark on a mass protest and rally in Imo State within this month of September 2023 in preparation for a shutdown of the state to compel the state government to stop the abuse and violation of the rights and privileges of workers and trade unions in the state. The FCT minister fails to stop forthwith the attack on workers and thousands of Nigerians through the demolition of houses which are mainly for the masses and the less privileged and the the, the third of the eight that NLC NLC will engage the minister on the streets of Abuja. Right now, the Corps Marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Dauda Alibiu, has expressed deep shock over the death of a Corps personnel of a, by a tow truck driver in a road crash at Karu Bridge in Abuja. Now, the crash occurred on the Nyanya Maraba Expressway on Friday in the course of towing a broken down trailer from the crash scene. A statement by the Corps Public Education Officer, BC Kazim, says an investigation revealed that four drivers or persons rather, were killed uh, during the incident, three of whom sustained different degrees of injuries, uh, with the driver being the only death recorded. Bill commiserated with the management and core over the loss of the personnel. Now, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has solicited the support of the United Nations in Nigeria's fight against terrorism in light of its effect on global peace displacement of people and rising poverty. Now, he made the appeal during an audience with the Under Secretary General of the United Nations Office in, on Counterterrorism, Vladimir Voronkov, at the State House on Thursday. Now, the President noted that, the, that terrorism had consistently reversed the gains in the development and increased instability in families and communities. He said that the United Nations needs to be more consistent in dealing with the situation in the developing world. Now, Tinubu says global peace and prosperity would demand the swift and comprehensive provision of the right answers to the challenges posed by insurgencies in parts of the world. In Bochi State, the State Police Command says it has repelled an attack and neutralized five members of a criminal gang who usually terrorized Jama'are town. Uh, the command stated this in a statement released by the public relations officer SP Ahmed Wakil on behalf of the Commissioner of Police. Now, according to him, a combined team of operatives in conjunction 
with a quasi-security outfit encountered the suspected kidnappers and bandits that recently attacked a market and kidnapped one businessman in Jama'ari. Some of the items recovered from the gang include three AK-47 rifles, one SMG rifle, three empty magazines, 105 rounds of live ammunition, and one cutlass. Now, Wakil maintains that the police operatives, in collaboration with local hunters, were carrying out routine surveillance and raids of suspected criminal hideouts when they suddenly came under gunfire from a heavily armed criminal gang. Now, the operatives fought back gallantly, according to the statement, repelling the attack and eventually neutralizing five of the gang leaders while other members have fled. Now, he added that pre preliminary investigation revealed that the suspected kidnappers and bandits were responsible for terrorizing Buji, Mashima, Itazgado, Guaram, Sara, Birnukudu, Ningi, and Bora, local areas of Bauchi State and Jigawa. Still talking security, the Plateau State Police Command has intercepted a truck loaded with dry leaves suspected to be Indian hemp in quarter area of just south local government area of the state. Now, the State Police Commissioner Okoro Julius, while parading the suspect, says the arrest was made following a tip-off by an informant additional that in receipt of the information, the command quickly mobilizes men to the area. He said upon citing the officers, the suspects took to the hills, adding, however, that four suspects have already been apprehended by the police. And they were able to intercept the truck, the trailer, loaded with bags or dry leaves suspected to be cannabis, concealed with cartons of dry gin. And four suspects were arrested, the driver and three others. They claim to have conveyed the hikers from uh, Lagos and their destination was Plateau State. Unfortunately for them, our men on patrol, the policemen on patrol intercepted them and brought them there. We are here to know the owner, the person that sent them on that terrace. And therefore, investigation is on in full gear to bring all the culprits that are involved to book. And in Imo, the police on Friday said two suspected kidnappers have been neutralized and the victim rescued at Avu near Oweri. The state capital. The command spokesperson, Assistant Superintendent of Police, Henry Okoye, in a statement says one locally made cut to, cut to size gun, two cutlasses, and charms were recovered from the suspects. He said the police swung into action following a distress call made by a Samaritan along Umwezo Rokam Avu in Oweri West local government area in an attempt to kidnap the victim. Now, the command spokesperson says the victim was rescued with a deep machete caught on his hand and other parts of the body and was immediately rushed to the Federal Medical Center in Oweri where he is currently receiving medical attention. He said the lifeless bodies of the neutralized hoodlums have been deposited at the morgue for preservation. Now women in the cabinet of President Bolami Tinubu have been urged to contribute their quota to the success of the Renewed Hope agenda of the current administration. Speaking exclusively to Trust TV Special Assistant on Women Affairs in the Office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yetunde Adeniji, commended the 25% allocation to women in the cabinet of the government while calling on them to give their best to deliver on the responsibilities given to them. According to her, women's economic empowerment and active participation is central to realizing women's rights and gender equality in Nigeria. From the list of ministers, we have a 25%, if not, representation out of the 35% affirmation that we've always wanted. And that is, which is extremely fair enough. We're still gunning for more. You know, we still want more. But what we have, and then we have these women in strategic ministries. And these strategic ministries that we have them in are ministries that cater to women. 
you look at humanitarian, you look at women affairs, you know, these are ministries that, that cater to the issues of women and who more to understand women than a fellow woman. So these women will be in the right position to ensure that, you know, women are catered to. They will bring up initiatives. They will bring up projects that will cater to them. And also make sure that women are also well represented within those ministries. Now, Benue State Government's plan to empower 5,000 women and 2,000 years from the 2 billion naira palliative initiative has been greeted by mixed reaction across the state. Now, this is coming as subsidy removal continues to bite hard on the lives of many Nigerians across Benue State. Jimmy Azandi has more. Benue State Governor High Centelier had recently unveiled his administration strategies aimed at cautioning the effect of first subsidy removal, which stirred up reactions from residents. Most of the Benue residents say the idea of first subsidy removal is a good one, though most families are finding it difficult to meet daily needs. First thing I would like to first of all establish that first subsidy removal is in the best interest of this nation. Having said that, uh, it is very obvious that people are passing through hardship, particularly those uh, from the lower class lower class in the sense that uh, are not uh, you know their income was not something to talk about the resident also said the empowerment of 5,000 women through grants 2,000 youths in ICT and provision of 100 buses for intra and interstate transportation if achieved are commendable strategies and uh, he has already applied a lot of things that uh, he want to carry out and uh, so far, they say that uh, about two billion has, uh, he has received two billion, and he has outlined many things that he intend to do. That is to create, um, to give uh, money to women cooperative about over five thousand, and he's going to train the youth in ICT over two thousand youths in the state on ICT, buying of buses for the Benue uh, links. That is to boost transportation. The residents also react to Governor Lea's policy to pay for all candidates sitting for SSC next year in public schools. Most especially with the issue of transportation, the governor said he's buying new vehicles to put them in the uh, new links as a state transport company so that it will cushion the effect of transportation. And for the paying of Wayek fees, there are parents that can't even pay for their kids' you know, the school now for Wayek because of the subsidy removal. But paying of the Wayek fees now, it's a, also a brilliant one. The governor recently told Benue residents that he has so far received 2 billion naira from the federal government to disburse as palliatives to the people. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. Well, you're watching the news update on Trust TV. Coming up ahead after the break, we we'll take a look at Adire traders' concern over the influx of adulterated products from China. More on this and many other stories coming up ahead in just a moment. Stay with us.
Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us on the news update. Here's a quick reminder of our top stories at this hour. Nigeria Labour Congress declares two-day warning strike over effects of subsidy removal. FRC boss mourns loss of personnel, directs immediate removal of obstructions cause, cause as reason for the crash. Now, children of the late designer of Nigeria's flag, Taiwo Akinkumi, have called on the federal government to immortalize the contributions of their father. First son of the late iconic Nigerian Akinkumi Akiremi Ayinde made the call in Ibadan, where he described his deceased father as an accomplished patriot whose contribution to national development were immeasurable. Here's the report. He is gone, but not forgotten. Taiwo. Akinkumi, designer of Nigeria's national flag, remains a remarkable Nigerian whose contribution to nationhood remains indelible in the hearts of many. Moments after his death, his residence in Ibadan is bereft of the usual buzz that accompanies the exit of a great nationalist and symbol of Nigeria's unity. Obli voice of the magnitude of the great loss that has befallen the nation, only a handful of visitors are here to mourn with the immediate family of the deceased. One of the visitors is Elijah Olatunde Taiwo, a former tenant of the late flagman who shared fond memories. I'm one of his tenants in his old house at Ekute Do Yolobe. I've been with him since 1976. And we are, he has been a very nice person to me. And he took us as if to say we are his son. Papa Taiwa Kekome has left a very fine legacy to, the, to Nigeria as a whole. A condolence register has been opened in honor of the deceased flagman for visitors to pen down their heartfelt messages. Meanwhile, children of the late Taiwo Akinkumi have called on the federal government to immortalize the memory of their late father. He has not been recognized enough because, as you can see, you know, I'll be happy and other will not be happy because since they have been naming, they have not named this man even a block, even a drainage. They did not name this man. They did not name anything on his name at all, which is not okay. People that they are not even do, the, uh, the people that they not even do much, like what he did. You can see where they are naming on uh, on their name. Wherever is in fact, we can't say it all. Our expectations from government is. You know, it's too enormous. When he was alive, the government did nothing for him. So when he's now late, unless less we the children should look to the face of God. As I am personally, I don't look to the government for anything. I you concerning me, I don't but because if you look at Nigeria of today, there are some Nigerians which they did nothing. They contributed nothing to the development of Nigeria and they are living okay. The late Taiwo Akinkumi was a designer of the Nigerian flag. He was born in Ibadan on the 10th of May 1936, where he lived a private life until he passed on to eternal glory in the early hours of Tuesday, August 29. Our traders of the indigenous Adire in Ogun State are seeking the intervention of the government to end the incursion of adulterated Chinese Adire attire in Nigeria's markets. Now, the traders specifically call on the governor of uh, the state, Dapo Abiodun, and the State House of Assembly to ban the sale of adulterated Chinese Adire in the local markets across the state, saying that this would save the culture and heritage across the state. The report. The traders made their feelings known during an advocacy walk through major streets within Abeokuta Metropolis. The walk, which terminated at the Palace of Alake of Egbaland, was to sensitize the people on the dangers of the invasion of adulterated fabrics. At Alake Palace, the protesters displayed the differences between locally made fabrics and the imported Chinese adore, noting that the proliferation of the Chinese version is to the detriment of the local markets. After this um, um, invasion of the China meat, 
these guys, ladies that are doing these fabrics, that are batik designers, that are um, Thai and Dai um, artists that are, that are into this industry. So many of them have lost their jobs. So many of them have loved, lost their jobs. And if we should open our eyes and say we are not concerned about what is going on, if youths are losing their jobs, we all know that the society will not be at rest. The response of the government to protect the populace. And I think it's the high time for the government to come to the rescue of indigenous textile and promote and protect the indigenous textile. Because it goes a long way. We are saying made in Nigeria. We are saying let economy, Nigeria economy grow. How can Nigeria economy grow if we, we, we start having piracy of indigenous cloth? If we cannot help the SME. So what, 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 then what are we talking about? The people, we people in this industry, we are the SME. And every nation that doesn't protect the SME is going to have economic back down. So we are, we are still appealing to government. They should step in. We need raw materials. While expressing hope that the EU will be properly handled, they said it has led to loss of job for small and medium scale entrepreneurs in the state. Now on the international scene, Algerian authorities shot dead at least one Moroccan ter tourist after a group of fires strayed into Algerian waters on jet skis. Now according to one of the survivors, only two of the group returned home saying that relatives of the victim and the family of a second man who is missing and presumed to be dead. Now, the incident took place on Tuesday after the five men lost their bearings while enjoying and exploring the sea on their jet skis near the Moroccan coastal resort of Saidia on the border with Algeria, says Mohamed Kisi, who survived the incident and who says his brother was killed. Now, the border between Algeria and Morocco has been closed since 1994 and the two have had no diplomatic relations since Algiers cut ties with Rabat in 2021. Speaking in a video published by Morocco's uh, news site, Kisi says the group of friends had been approached by, after dark uh, by an Algerian government vessel. He said he heard the boat firing on the group and said his brother Bilal, aged 29, and another man, aged 40, were both shot dead. Another member of their group was detained by Algerian authorities, according to the witness. Moroccan authorities say they could not comment on the case, calling it a judicial matter. To sports now, Habibu Sadiq has completed his move to Kano Pillars ahead of the start of the 2023-2024 Nigeria Professional Football League season. Sadiq signed for an undisclosed fee for the same as Wigida side. Now, the rock solid defender put 10 to, or rather, pen to paper on a two year deal with the club. He was unveiled to the fans before Wednesday's training session. Sadiq joined Abdullahi Mekaba's tutored side from arch rivals Casino United. The former Flying Eagles player played a key role in Casino United's promotion to the NPFL last season. He began his playing career with he began his playing career with non-league side Rarara FA before moving to Wikitoris of Bauchi and then to Casina United. Well, that's it uh, for the news at this hour. There'll be more news uh, later on at 6 o'clock. But for now, thank you very much for joining us. Feel free to follow us across our social media platform for more content and visit trusttv.com for more news. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Thank you for watching.